All right, here is going to be our third example for Le Hapital's rule. I'm going to underline a bunch of stuff, and we're going to take a look at this one. Example three. Okay, so keyword evaluate. Just remember evaluate means figure out, um, basically simplify. Now we have an interesting example here because we have a limit coming from the right, okay? It's only from the right, it's not from the left. Keep that in mind as we evaluate this limit. And then uh, we have an interesting uh, fusion function, I would say, uh, because we're putting together a trig function sine and a transcendental function ln of x. Putting all that together, we're going to see why we need to use the Hapital's rule. So let's go ahead and plug in 0. Uh, now here's what's crazy. Okay, Let's go back to sine. Um, if you rewrite sine using one of the quotient identities, okay, sine is 1 over cosecant, right? Just like 1 over cosecant is sine. So by rewriting it um, that way, you get a fraction. And what fraction do you get? You get natural log of x over cosecant of x. And when we plug in 0 from the right, by the way, uh, we need to take a look at these as well for confirmation and I'll show you a graph of natural log but the limit as z uh, x approaches zero from the right of natural log is going to be negative infinity in fact before we move on uh, I will show you where that figure comes from and we will bring up the graphic okay so as you can see this is natural log of x the limit from the right means we're going down this way it goes to negative infinity notice the limit from the left doesn't exist which is why we're only doing the limit from the right so just keep that in mind Okay, and the limit uh, cosecant from the right is of zero is just going to be uh, infinity. And again, we need to take a look at a graph of that to visually confirm that. Um, so I will bring that up. Uh, think about it: this cosecant's still, you know, what one over sine. And if you're approaching sine from the right, that's from positive values, right? then sine would also be positive, right? And as you get closer and closer to zero, it's going to get bigger, bigger, and bigger because you're dividing by a really small number. So it's one divided by a really small number, which is a really big number. That's a way of looking at thinking about in the unit circle, but let's take a look at the graph. All right, so here we have cosecant of x. You can see the limit as x approaches zero from the right is going to be infinity. And there you go. There is the visual confirmation. So limit from the right on the top is negative infinity limit from the right on the bottom is infinity this is these are some of the indeterminate forms we talked about this is one of them anytime you have any form of infinity over infinity whether it be positive or negative you know you're going to use the hoppy tiles rule now before I go on um, you might be thinking well how did you know to convert the sign to 1 over cosecant well if you go ahead and try to plug in uh, 0 uh, first off, you get 0 times infinity. That is not one of the indeterminate forms. I guess maybe a step 0 uh, would be to convert the original function to a fraction. And so I'm glad I did this example because sometimes if you don't have a fraction, convert it to one. Okay, Convert it to a fraction. That way you can try to use Le Hapital's rule because it only works for fractions. So I'll type that up just to be clear about that. Okay, so here it is in words. If the function is not a fraction, try converting it into one. That way we can use the hoppy tiles rule. So that's the purpose of this example. Like I said, you could call it step zero really. Um, normally we don't do that, okay, which is why I didn't include it in one of the original steps. But because it's not a fraction, if you convert it to one, hopefully you can use the Hoppy Tiles rule in this case. You can because it's in indeterminate form. So what do we do? We take the derivative of the top and bottom and hope for the best. Uh, let's remember some of our um, derivative rules. The derivative of ln of x is pretty uh, convenient. It's just 1 over x on the top. On the bottom, derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So just, just go back and make sure you... Um, remember some of your trig derivatives as well as some of your transcendental derivatives. So there's the derivatives. Now we're going to take 0 from the right, plug it in, see what happens. 
see if we can get there. There we go. Now if we plug in zero to the top, okay, um, we're gonna get one over zero. Um, oh, I, I, I forgot, I, I'm skipping a step, I'm sorry. We need to simplify this first, okay? And so the bottom we have cosecant co times cotangent. We can simplify that by turning things into sine and cosine. So I'm going to change cosecant to 1 over sine. The negative is still there. I'm going to cha change cotangent to cosine over sine. This goes back to quotient identities. I have a video on that as well. You're welcome to view it anytime. It's in a pre-calculus. Uh, but anyways, uh, this will become negative cosecant over sine squared. Now, why did I do it that way? I did it that way so we could rewrite this entire fraction in terms of a simpler fraction. And so basically what happens is um, we can take this fraction down here. Let me notate this with some color so you can see. We can take this fraction right here and basically flip it and change it to multiplication and then combine the top of that in one fraction. So now we have 1 times sine squared on top and we have x times cosine of x on the bottom and I just decided to take the negative and put it on top. I don't think it's going to really matter. And so uh, simplification is important. That's one of the steps we learned. This is not simplified because it's a complex fraction. So to order to simplify it, we obviously can get it down to this, which is simpler than this. So always simplify. It's going to make your life easier. I think if you didn't simplify, uh, actually I don't know what would happen, but just always simplify. It always in tends to work out better for me. So now let's plug in zero and see what we get. Um, in this case, we are golden because when we plug in 0 to the top, sine of 0 is 0. And if you square it, 0. On the bottom, if you plug in 0, uh, you get 0 for x. Cosine of 0 is 1, but it doesn't matter. So you still get an indeterminate form. Uh, yeah, I, I guess um, now, now that I think about it, I'm just kind of curious here. Have, have we plugged in 0 without simplifying to the top? You know. I don't know. It would have been undefined, I guess. So I guess it is important to simplify because you can't really say that's infinity, although some would argue. Um, and then cosecant of zero would also be undefined. So yes, it's absolutely important that you simplify this so that you don't get undefined, which is why we did all that. So just to clarify that. So, But we do get an indeterminate form, but that's okay. We can use uh, L'Hopital's rule again to take the derivative of this and make it work out. Just remember, we're going to use the chain rule here because this is being squared, and on the bottom, we're going to be using the product rule. Okay, so the derivative of the top would be you take this exponent, move it out front, and it'd be negative 2 sine of x, and then take the derivative of the inside of that, which is uh, derivative of sine is cosine, so the answer is negative 2 sine cosine on top. On the bottom, you'll use the product rule. f prime would be 1, g would be cosine, plus fg prime. So it'd be plus 1 times negative sine, so it just turns to 1 times cosine of x minus x sine of x. Again, if you need a review, just go back and watch the, the lesson on the product rule. So when we do that, you don't really have to simplify that at that point. You can, though, just to cosine of x minus sin, x sine of x. But now we can plug in 0 again, see what happens. Sine of 0 is 0, so the whole top's going to become 0. On the bottom, we get cosine of 0, which is 1 minus 0 times 0, which is 0. So we get 0 over 1, which is 0. So we've just proven, this is kind of a very, kind of more advanced problem for uh, uh, La Hapital's rule. We have just proven that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of this function is indeed 0. We had to do some simplification, but we ultimately got to the right answer. Let's graph this function and verify. So we're going to graph sine of x, ln of x, and see that the limit from the right of 0 is 0. All right, here's our function. And to me, this is a very aesthetic kind of function. Um, it's kind of funny how the oscillations get bigger and bigger as you move out. Again, this is uh, just uh, looking at our function. ln of x, sine of x is the function that we're graphing here. Uh, but we can see the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is approaching 0, even though it oscillates. And I don't know if this is one that oscillates forever. Sometimes they do. I'm having a hard time zooming in here. Sometimes this app doesn't want to zoom in. It wants to do other things. Uh, but anyway, you, you can see that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is 0. From the left, it doesn't exist. OK, there we go. There I was able to zoom in. And it doesn't look like it oscillates anymore, but it does approach 0, which is pretty crazy from the right. It gets really, really close to it. Um, 
but it doesn't exist at zero, right? Because uh, ln of zero it doesn't exist. So anyway, interesting problem. Using the happy tools, we found the limit as x approaches zero from the right. If you have any other questions about the happy tiles rule, let me know.